This cricket bin actually smells pretty good. It has a mild garden soil type smell. Not at all unpleasant. Hi, Russ of Aquarium X Pets here. Many of us use crickets as a live food for reptiles, amphibians, invertebrates, but one of the disadvantages of culturing crickets is the unpleasant smell associated with a bin full of them. Well, I'm here to tell you that it doesn't have to be that way. This culture bin of banded crickets is less work than any other method of cricket culture that I've ever tried, and I've tried a few of them, and it smells a whole lot better. And in today's video, I'm going to share my enclosure setup and maintenance methods with you. Let's start with the substrate. It's very similar to the substrate I use for my isopod. Most of it is just about 1.5 to 2 inches of organic compost topped with a layer of leaf litter. Unless the banded crickets are kept in a warm room, they do best with supplemental heat. So I added this ultratherm heat mat on the side of the enclosure, and there are links in the description. I stack several layers of egg crate right up against the heat mat so the crickets can thermoregulate. The warmest parts of the egg crate nearest the heat mat reach the mid to high 80s Fahrenheit, and as the distance from the heat mat increases, the temperature dips into the mid to low 70s. To make sure that most of the heat goes into the enclosure, I used a sheet of polystyrene on the outside surface of the mat. Now this is recommended for this type of mat, but it might not work with all types of heat mat. So if you use a heat mat, make sure to follow the directions and always use it at your own risk. Before I talk more specifically about why this cricket bin doesn't smell bad, I'd like to take a moment to thank my patrons at patreon.com. I love to learn new things and then share what I learn with all of you in my videos. My patrons play a vital role in that process. In fact, I can't think of a better way to help me continue to do that than becoming a patron, which you can do for as little as one US dollar per month. If you would like to become a patron, you can search for Aquarimax Pets at patreon.com or just click the link at the end of this video or in the description. And now, back to what keeps this bin smelling like fresh garden soil. A big part of that is the cleanup crew. In addition to the beneficial bacteria that live in the substrate, I have an army of springtails in there as well. The environment in the bin really seems to suit the springtails. I have Sonella curvaceta in here, and they are definitely doing their part to keep the culture in good shape. I've thought about adding isopods, but I'm not sure if isopods would leave the cricket eggs alone. I'm contemplating adding some low-risk isopods and seeing how that goes, but so far the system appears to be working well as is. Now I'll be honest, this is a fairly new bin. It's been set up for about two months, but crickets breed and mature quickly, so it's been going long enough to have demonstrated that the crickets are hatching, growing, maturing, breeding, and so on in here, and more than long enough to demonstrate the lack of unpleasant odors. I'm delighted at how simple it has been to maintain this bin. That sounded weird. Please note that the crickets in this bin are Gerloides sigillatus, banded crickets, as I mentioned, Though I have cultured both banded crickets and house crickets, Arceta domestica, successfully for years using more conventional methods, I haven't tried this bioactive culture method with house crickets. From what I understand, they are a lot more likely to dig up and eat their own eggs, but who knows, this method might be worth trying with that species as well. I've decided to work with banded crickets for a few reasons. For one, they tend to be hardier and more long-lived than house crickets. They chirp much more quietly. They may be less likely to chew on the reptiles or amphibians that are supposed to be eating them, and they appear to be more resistant to the densovirus that house crickets are susceptible to. On the other hand, banded crickets just don't get quite as large as house crickets, and that can be a disadvantage depending on what you're feeding them to, and they're also more accomplished at leaping, so they may be more likely to escape when you open the bin. In my particular situation, having extensive experience with both species, I'd much rather culture banded crickets, though. I sometimes wish I could just culture roaches instead. Speaking of roaches, I need to give a shout out to Kyle Candillion at Roach Crossing, who in large part inspired this cricket setup. I've been working with bioactive cultures of various species of feeder arthropods for years now, but Kyle has been doing that for considerably longer than I have, and is a wealth of information on the topic. You can check out our discussion on this topic here. After that interview, I just had to try to culture this species in a bioactive setup, and I am pleased enough with the results so far that I wanted to share them with you. 
As far as maintenance go, I add food. I'm using both Josh's Frog's Cricket Diet and Dog Food Kibble, supplemented with vegetables occasionally, and I am using water crystals to keep the crickets hydrated. It's likely I could also rely on fresh, juicy veggies and perhaps a little misting on the sides to keep the crickets hydrated. And the substrate, or at least a good portion of it, needs to be slightly damp, but never soggy. This permits the cricket eggs to hatch. So I dampen that maybe one to two times per week, as needed. The egg crates eventually get covered in cricket frass and need to be replaced periodically. As the culture ages, I will also be removing and replacing portions of the substrate, probably no more than half the substrate at a time, to ensure that a healthy population of beneficial microorganisms and springtails are present in the culture at all times. Wiping down the sides to keep dust and various things from building up on the sides is always a good idea, as these crickets can't climb smooth, clean plastic, but they can climb dirt. Have you ever cultured crickets? Would you try out a setup like this? Let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching. I post videos every Friday with live streams on Tuesdays or Wednesdays, all on aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to like, share, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then tap the bell for all notifications so you don't miss my next video.